What's going on guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Man's Comics and this of course is that weekly comic book market video we have for you and yes we are talking about three up three down where we're giving you three hot and three cold comic book market trends but before we do that I want to let you know we just aired a brand new episode of our Simple Man's Comics and Friends podcast and that was a fantastic episode wasn't it Jack? Oh, absolutely, yes. We had two of our uh, great longtime Patreon members, as well as excellent members of the comic community, Adam from the Strange Tales to Collect YouTube channel, as well as Tony Fix, better known as Blue Green Artifacts. Uh, it's been everywhere, all over eBay, all over Instagram, dabbles a bit in YouTube, uh, but great guys and uh, great discussion. Yeah, so I want to thank them again for being on the show last night, and again, that video is available on the channel right now, as well as on those audio podcasts, wherever those are found. I'm talking Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere. But with that being said, we're going to get into the three up portion, starting with CBCS. Big news came out. A lot of YouTube channels are talking about it. A lot of articles are talking about it. CBCS just launched their census this week, Jack. Yeah, CBCS is the hot company to be involved in right now. And definitely most of the media outlets are taking note. Um, you're seeing a lot of coverage of the census this week because not having a census was one of the main criticisms that a lot of people within the grading community had for CBCS. Now, there was good logic to why they had held off. We talked about that on the podcast. The reality was that they couldn't put out a census as soon as the company started. It was going to cause too much trouble within the market with the fact that you had too small of a sample size. It could lead people to believe things about books that just really aren't true. So they wanted to really be responsible and take their time and wait till they built up enough of a registry of books where they felt like they were adding something to the hobby rather than taking it away. And I think it's that corporate responsibility in the way in which CBCS takes their customers seriously that has made them really rise in the last six months. I remember when we first talked about the fact that CGC books tend to do a bit better on the secondary market than CBCS. We heard so many of you reach out to us um, in displeasure for just that comment and in your support of CBCS, and it really made us pay attention. So we've been watching those sales over the last few months. Those sales have absolutely crept up to a more comparable level. I think if things keep trending this way, we could have two companies on equal footing, and that is what the hobby ultimately needs. We need options. We need innovation. Yeah, so they just announced the census. They also got a new label, a new holder coming out. And I've heard that they also are working on a registry as well, but they're going to be calling it something different. We're big fans of CBCS here on the channel. We talk about them off and on throughout our videos, but they're definitely hot right now with that census. So go ahead and check it out over there at cbcscomics.com. Then the next one we have for our three-up portion, we are talking about Dark Horse Star Wars books. We aren't just talking about them right now. We've been talking about them for a while, as well as pretty much the comic community. There's a lot of talk with characters between Star Wars, Rebels, Kanan, whole types of other Star Wars properties that you don't normally talk about, but they've been in comic books in the past, and now you're seeing the heat, right? Yeah, um, there's the Mandalorian and its success uh, has really done a lot to validate not just Star Wars speculation, but really the Disney Plus app as a whole and the speculation surrounding it. Um, and a lot of people are trying to hit it big on that next big Star Wars property. What is going to captivate people the way the child or baby Yoda did? What is going to make people um, almost forget about Boba Fett and really follow a new Mandalorian? What is going to do that? And people are putting their bets into the next big thing. We're seeing Darth Nihilus, Darth Raven. We're seeing Admiral Thrawn. We're seeing Dr. Aphra. Um, although that's more from the Marvel series. You mentioned Kanan. There's definitely some plays going into there with Sabine Wren. But so many of these first appearances are landing right in this Dark Horse run. Um, and the reality is that these long forgotten characters who were written off as non-canon by Marvel um, now have this opportunity to shine in other media. So people are placing their bets and people are even taking those long shots. We've seen uh, the Star Wars Tales number seven um, uh, for the Boba Fett, the birth of Boba Fett's daughter. Um, that book has been speculated on. Um, Star Wars Tales 23 with Darth Raven cameo. So we're getting the cameo first appearance, that Old Republic number nine. Um, a lot of books spiking. Uh, you talked about Clone Wars number one, uh, and of course the incentive variant. 
and people are excited for the fact that Star Wars is now an open book because we closed the door on nine great episodes of of film. Um, you can say what you want about some of them individually, but really a feat to put nine movies connecting together that tell a linear story. Pretty amazing. Yeah, and I agree. I like the fact that the talk's also coming from those other shows, those cartoons, the Mandalorian TV show, more so than the movie. I agree. I like the movies. A lot of people hate it on some of them. I even like the one shots kind of better than the Skywalker saga. But either way, I think another reason you talk about the Mandalorian show, I think even though it's closed right now with those two Star Wars lands opened at Disneyland and Hollywood Studios at Disney World, anyone that goes to those gets immersed in that whole Star Wars universe and automatically, I think, comes out a fan. I don't think anyone leaves there without buying something from the gift shop. But either way, I think it's a combined force of everything. Everyone's talking Star Wars right now. We just had May the 4th. So no doubt it's uber popular and for good reason. But the last one we're talking about the three down this week is those Marvel late printings. We're seeing a lot of people chase later printings right now, Jack. Yeah, Brad. And some of this, I think more than a trend is almost coincidental. We've had some separate incidents in the, uh, the market. Everybody has been chasing that null stuff, right? So we had the null situation, the long story short, we talked about it previously on the show where there was some debate as what is Null's first cover appearance? Is it the retailer exclusive Scon variant from Frankie's Comics of issue number five? Or is it that late printing number three? People jumped on that late printing number three. That book shot up in price to astronomical numbers. And then people kind of realized, well, wait a minute. You know, three is an avatar. Four may be the first. And then four jumped up. It got kind of silly, Brian. And we're seeing it happen now across the board where – um, Silver Surfer Black, the number one uh, uh, late printing. Some of those covers have started to take off. We're starting to see more and more, a lot of it surrounding Null, but we're seeing more of these late printings become chased later on. And they become chased for some of these like new school reasons, like first cover appearance. Um, but it's funny because you can't equate it across the board. Because I think about a book like, um thanos 13 the first appearance of cosmic ghost rider cosmic ghost rider does not appear on the cover does not appear on the cover of the variant but does appear on the cover of the second print so how come the second print isn't a say hundred dollar book well it, it doesn't necessarily equate so i can't tell whether or not this is telling me hey marvel late printings because of the way they use interior panel art and the surprise nature of them I've always felt like they're good investments. I think they have the potential to spike down the road. Or is this more just a fervor over Null in general and what surrounds that character? Is this even more credence to the fact that that character is really an A character in the making? Yeah, and you know what kind of reminds me of? About four years ago when we were talking about those DC combo packs. Yes. And everyone was going out oh, hunting man. those DC combo packs because – they figured out like it, it's basically almost an incentive variant the, the way the print run is for the combo packs. Kind of seeing that again with some of these later printings. They're talking about, oh, there's only so many of these printing. And that's, of course, going off Comicron, which is the biggest guesstimate you can make going off sales figures. But And you're also seeing Spider-Verse. You're talking about the ones where we always complain about where they aren't new covers. It's just a color change on, the, on top of it. But they're starting to be sought after for. And I think some of that also – is that pause and new releases people are finding other stuff that they want to go out and pick up and there's a trend there and people are picking up and going after some of those later prints as well but no doubt ignited by the whole Noel thing as well right and dc comics again i'm going to call you out again for like the millionth time on the channel take note because boom studios is seeing second print spikes image comics is seeing second print spikes marvel is seeing second print spikes and here you have the hottest character in the world in Punchline, and you give us three prints that are all lazy in the same cover with just discoloration. Come on. Yeah. Come on, DC. One bro. ATT. Can yeah, you hear me now? Gonna, we're not going to stop. Nice. <laughs> but anyway, there's the three up portion. Do us a favor, click that thumbs up button. And if you're new here and this is your first time on this channel, we do a lot of comic and pop culture related content. So consider subscribing. We're going to shift over to the down side this week. And this, I want to really always say it's down. It's just this one more so than previous ones it actually presents great buying opportunities. And we're going to start right now with Ciudad, which you might be going, what the heck is that? I know we were at first, but then once you do your research and everyone knows, 
there's a pretty big Netflix movie going on right now, right? Yeah, without a doubt, Brian, this coronavirus pandemic has put everybody in the house, and we have been looking for entertainment sources. And while it may not have reached the heights of Tiger King, this Russo Brothers Chris Hemsworth production has seen major reviews. It's seen a lot of views, and there's already been talks about the future franchising. It's been compared to John Wick. It's been compared to the Jason Bourne franchise. Um, you know, there's some twists at the end that let you believe that this could continue no matter how bleak the situation is and yes it is based off of a comic book property and that's one of the things that a lot of people may not be aware of um the russo brothers tell a story about how they're diehard comic book collectors and they met the guys from omni press who asked if they were familiar with their work they hadn't seen a lot of it they got sent some stuff and they really fell in love with this story and the character tyler rake and what they saw that he could be so they went ahead and, and went into production with Netflix on this film. And it's one of those things where this is where we talk, we've talked a lot about options and options not all being the same. This was really released only as a graphic novel. 1999 cover price, an absolute ghost. Now, it's on the down portion because we've only seen one sale this month at $28, which is really only a small profit margin. I mentioned on our podcast, the guy who sold it was probably thrilled to sell that book over a cover price because he made no mention of the Netflix film or the word extraction in his title. But it is my feeling that if somebody was to put this book online, they could command a pretty penny for it. Um, you know, Not having individual issues makes that graphic novel truly the first appearance. And the reality that in today's comic book market, scarcity is what drives the market. I am shocked that when this movie hit Netflix and was this big hit, we didn't see this influx of copies. And it really makes me wonder, speaking of comic Cron and print run numbers, how many of these books actually exist? Brian, I think this could be a true ghost. Yeah, I would imagine probably, what, 3,000 maybe? Max. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great. My only concern is I think it's with we kind of talked about with the ending cycle is how as long as the attention span is on Chris Hemsworth and is on the Netflix movie or sell now or put it away and hopefully there's a, yeah. a sequel like you said that that and then next time when the sequel comes a little bit more marketing behind hey this was a graphic novel well, you didn't hear much about it being a graphic novel no. after the fact. We're going to move on to the next one on the cold we have Star Wars that have already been in movies but their comic books are starting to see a little bit of decline. But Jack and I, we actually like that because it's a time that we can go back and pick some of those up. Because I think there's so much to explore in that Star Wars universe. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I think the play that everyone's missing is the fact that people are assuming, say, spoiler alert, if Kylo Ren's dead, that Kylo Ren's dead. And we'll never see Kylo Ren or Adam Driver again as that character. And I don't think that's the case. Um, We've talked about this on several programs. I think there's potential for, I mean, just look at the, the Rise of Kylo Ren comic series. Um, yeah, if they I could do an Obi-Wan series, they could do a Kylo Ren backstory series. There's without a doubt, uh, without a doubt, a backstory there. Um, there's without a doubt, even his childhood. I think a lot of people would love to see um, what it was like growing up, the, the, the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia. So there's a lot with Kylo Ren. Having said that, Brian, I, I've really kind of noticed it just tells me something about the comic market. This show is all about trends, right? And here's the trend that I'm noticing. This market, this secondary market, the secondary market that we all love is not driven by collectors. And I say that because I believe that collectors just ride the wave of these prices. And I say that because if as a collector, why would a Darth Nihilus a first appearance be more desirable to you than Darth Vader's? Shouldn't even be close, right? Why would Kylo Ren's first appearance be less desirable than, say, Sabine Wren? But it's not even close. And I think it's gambling, Brian. I really do. I think it's gambling. I think it's it, – you look at fantasy sports. You look at sports cards. You look at what's going on in the speculation market. I think that people love to pick what's the next character. That They have an enjoyment for that. They like to say – to be the guy who's been saying for five years, uh, you know, these Rebels characters are coming. Uh, I, I've been hoarding them for years. Now I'm going to make a fortune. But I don't even know if it's really about the actual money um, because we've noticed that these characters that appear prior to their books, Captain Phasma, Poe Dameron, Finn, 
um, Ray, all of these amazing characters. I mean, all of them, their first appearances are cover price or less. Um, it's shocking. And, the, and we're talking zero heat. Outside we, of the Casada variant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But, and that's hot for the variant reason. Nothing to do with the first appearance. So the last one we're talking about on three down, we just talked about HBO Max on our last episode of Superman's Comics of Friends, but here's another older title that just got picked up for a reboot for a TV show on HBO Max, and we're talking about Hellraiser. Yeah, Hellraiser is a, a, a popular property, right? It's a popular film property, and it kind of falls into the category of one of those properties that really doesn't get connected to comic books, but it has a, a long history in comics. The character Pinhead, who is the obviously the quintessential character for Hellraiser, debuted in a novel, and then almost immediately after that novel appeared in Epic Comics, Hel Clive Barker Presents Hellraiser, number one and number two. And here's the great thing. Number one is starting to get a little bit of attention. And when I say a little bit of attention, I mean like a $10 book. And this is for a first appearance. But this is a major bolo for you guys out there in the Simplements Comics family. Be on the lookout for number two. Number two is regularly still sitting available. It's being overlooked in favor of number one. But you know what, Brian? We talk about this on the channel. Not enough people flip through the comics. So number one features Pinhead on the cover, but does not feature him in the book whatsoever. Number two is really the first appearance where Pinhead is featured in the book. Otherwise, there is the Marvel uh, Epic Comics crossover with Pinhead number one, which is that classic red foil cover. And then more recently, we saw the Boom Studios run, which was really big in the, the kind of uh, ascension of Boom Studios. This was a major property for them to get, a major license to work with Clive Barker. As he, you know, he really, if he's going to allow these characters to be used, he wants his hands involved in them. Yeah, and I like that 2011 Boom series. It's written by Clive Barker himself, and you got gorgeous covers in there and bearing covers yeah. from Overlooked. Tim Gradstreet, who does awesome art. So either way, I'm not saying they're going to spike super high, but it's, if you're a horror fan and you haven't read that series, it's a great one to pick up and read. Yeah, overlooked and scarce incentives in that, in that series as well. So I think you're right on to it with those. Yeah, I think it's a great comic series for any mortal men to write. So kudos to that. So there it is, guys. That's three up, three down this week. Again, go and comment down below. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you thought of this list. What do you think's hot? What do you think's cold? What do you think is trending upwards or downwards? As you can see, we're putting comments from the previous video on the screen right now. Let us know. Comment down below. Click that thumbs up button for us. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. This is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. What you expect? How I forget these thoughts of you? Don't need no reps. I'm in the jet. Gonna fly the coop. Fly the coop. Shot it. Don't play that game. Shot it. Don't play that game. I won't keep you safe.